One of Mother Nature's most enduring puzzles, female sexuality. It's been more than a decade since Viagra became the go-to cure for male sexual dysfunction, and yet we're still nowhere near a female equivalent. But now a team of scientists has an intriguing hypothesis just for the ladies. When it comes to achieving climax, we may have been fixating on the wrong body part. Now just make yourself comfortable, relax. You'll never believe what these women are doing. It's the subject of documentaries and scientific studies. Are you nervous? How are you feeling? I'm a little nervous. Um, yeah, the cameras, a little performance anxiety. The performance in question requires Kate Sukel to masturbate to orgasm inside a less than romantic MRI machine. So you ready, Kate? I'm ready. Barry Komusarek and his team of researchers here at Rutgers University get yourself set up with the lube. are monitoring every detail of her climax. The pupils are dilating during orgasm. All in the name of neuroscience. Orgasm is a one of the most all-encompassing phenomena in the brain. Today, the great debate centers on whether female sexual dysfunction is a physical medical condition or a problem not in the loins, but in the head. This is the orgasm. By investigating the brain's reaction, Kate's helping these scientists unlock the elusive secrets of a woman's pleasure peak. But she's also trying to help level the sexual playing field. Talk to your doctor. See if America's most prescribed ED treatment is right for you. When Viagra became a blockbuster drug in the 90s, as many as 30 million men were suddenly diagnosed with erectile dysfunction, given prescriptions and insurance coverage for the little blue pill, or one of the slew of others. Cialis. It's a five billion dollar business. Meanwhile, when it came to women, yes, yes. Well, remember when Harry met Sally? Oh, 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 God. And guess what? Almost 25 years later, half of us women say we still fake it. And the reason may be this: as many as 75 percent of us don't have an orgasm during intercourse. Kate's book, Dirty Minds, explores the notion that the problem so far is that we're attacking the wrong part of a woman's body. That for women, the brain is our most powerful sex organ. This is a brain, and this is a brain having an orgasm. Eighty different regions of the brain reach their maximum activity. Yeah, ba basically it's the whole brain. Look closely at beautifulagony.com. Can you tell if this is pleasure or pain? The only other event that affects your brain as intensely as orgasm is an epileptic seizure. Why do human beings have orgasms? For procreation of the race. It, it functions in that way. I mean, if uh, sexual activity has to be uh, pleasurable. Not too long ago, Kate was happily married with a superb sex life. Then she gave birth to her son. I think it's pretty common. After you have a child, intimacy goes away, uh, the sex life suffers. She says her libido crumbled and so did her marriage. As a newly single mom, she set off to find how love and lust impacts the brain. When you saw your brain all lit up, what, what did it look like? It looked like a Christmas tree. Uh, everything was glowing. And honestly, I was astounded. Komusarek hopes to find answers for ladies lacking sexual desire, especially the roughly 10 to 15 percent of women who seemingly can't have an orgasm at all. Anorgasmia. Um, where does the blockage occur in those people? When women take drugs like Viagra, it gets blood circulating better down there, but it just doesn't work to produce orgasms. But the problem was, in order to develop the drug, they had to have a disorder. 18 of the 19 doctors who came up with the disorder, female sexual dysfunction, had ties to 22 drug companies. Liz Kanner's documentary, Orgasm Inc., follows the pharmaceutical industry's quest for the holy grail, FDA approval to treat female sexual dysfunction. They launched clinical trials with creams, gels, even nose sprays. At the time, one widely quoted and wildly overstated survey suggested that 43 percent of women aged 18 to 59 had some kind of sexual dysfunction, which meant a lack of desire and pleasure or painful intercourse. Sexual dissatisfaction is not a disease. What would the motivation be for making women feel like they have a disease or a disorder when it comes to their sex life? It was saying to Wall Street, there's a huge market here if we can come up with a female Viagra drug. After all that, there's still only one FDA-approved device, which involves a small vacuum-like contraption. I can always get there. Every time you have sex? She's exaggerating. Most experts don't think there will ever be a pill for women, which doesn't mean there's no hope. 
But really the answer may just be in trying something new, being open, being able to communicate, um, and you know, maybe getting a little bit outside your comfort zone. But it's something of a catch-22 for married ladies. Studies have shown that having a new lover improves your sexual arousal. Erotic imagery is shown to work too. But if you're not comfortable with the politics of porn, there are other scientifically proven ways to spice things up. Vibrators, for instance, also tend to help a lot of women. Being more experimental, have a sex date, um, you know, liven it up. We live in a country where the radio stations I talk to, I can't say orgasm on the air. We live in a society where we're still debating whether or not uh, there should be birth control allowed. We live in a country where people are really obsessed about sex and also very hung up about it. So I think we need to get over that. Our sexual happiness, it seems, depends on it. What's an orgasm like for you? Um, I'm gonna say that it's like a blooming flower.